All right, so I want to uh, talk a little bit about, or at least walk you through some of the problems um, as example problems that will help you for your homework. So to start off with, we need to remember that we have two, uh, let's see here, um, that we have two types of formulas that we're working with. We're working with F equals mg, and we're working with also x being position. Uh, can be solved by one half g t squared. All right. So, how do you know which one to use? It's the key in all of that is identifying what you have. So, I always like to underline my numbers. Here we have an example where Seneca has a mass of 62 kilograms. Uh, what is the force on Seneca due to gravity? So, those are some key words. So, with that said, I know that 62 kilograms is a unit of mass, so I will identify that. Force is what I'm trying to find, so I'm going to leave that as my question mark. And then I have this idea of gravity right here, and I need to think, hmm, I know that my gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. So with that said, I need to look up here and see, okay, what is it that I have in which of these formulas will work. Well, clearly I have F and M and G, so the formula we'll be using is F equals MG. So my force is unknown. My mass, I do know, is 62 kilograms times my G acceleration or gravitational acceleration, which is 98 uh, meters per second squared. And I get a number that is 607.6 newtons if I do that. So that is the force that is on Seneca due to gravity. So what is Seneca's weight? And so you need to think back on weight. Remember, weight is how much of a pull does Seneca have to the center? How much pull is the center of the Earth pulling on Seneca? And it is measured in newtons. Weight is not measured in pounds like we do in day-to-day -day life. And so because it's measured in newtons, Seneca's weight is exactly the same as the force. So it is, his weight is 607.6 newtons. So that's how you would solve anything that has to do with F equals mg. So for the second problem, this is one we went through in class as well, uh, where you drop the china, what is the rate of the fall? Rate is asking how quickly is it changing its speed. In other words, it's asking for the acceleration. So the acceleration for any free-falling object is 9.8 meters per second squared. So that answers that question. And when it hits the ground two seconds later, what is uh, the velocity? Well, we know that in one second, it traveled from zero meters per second to 9.8 meters per second. Okay, that took one second because I know from up here every one second it travels 9.8 meters faster than it did before. So zero plus 9.8 meters per second uh, faster in one second is 9.8. So how much faster would it be traveling in second two? Well, it's traveling at 9.8 meters per second after the first second and its acceleration is, is that it's going to be traveling 9.8 meters even faster than it was before. In other words, it's traveling 9.8 plus 9.8 meters per second faster to be a number of 19.6 meters per second. And so that's our answer, 19.6 meters per second. All right. So um, what we can also do for this one just to, to get that... Uh, idea is that you take the G value, which is gravitational pull, and you multiply it by your T value to get your velocity. Okay? So that is one way that you can do that. So that's pretty straightforward. So V equals GT um, if you don't want to draw it out. All right, for the next question is I'm standing on a roof. I drop a hammer and notice it hits the ground and three seconds later. How far did my hammer fall? So a couple of things that we know. We have three seconds. That is a unit of time. Three seconds. 
I want to know distance. That is my value of x. I don't know that. But I do know that it, I've dropped it, and it's doing a free fall. So in this case, where you have x and t, you could use this formula, 1 half gt squared. And so in this case, I would take x, which is my unknown. I have the 1 half. I know my gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. And my time is 3. I need to square that. So that works out to be 1 half 9.8 meters per second squared times 3 to the squared is 9. So my answer is 44.1 meters. So I can do that. If I wanted to go back and do the calculations like we did in class using that, that's perfectly fine as well. Either one is fine. I find this one to be a little bit easier. And hopefully those three examples should walk you through um, or at least help you with your homework. Best of luck.